Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, the abridged version. Chapter 14 on to Scotland. Once we arrived in the city, Henry quickly returned to his studies. He met with different language teachers and picked up where he had left off in Ingolstadt. We were back at school together, just like we were in Germany. I tried hard to hide my feelings. I didn't want him to see how unhappy I was to be studying science again. Just seeing the laboratory brought back memories of the time when I made the first monster. How could I do it all over again? Thinking about the events of the past few weeks kept me awake night after night. What had I done? What had I promised? Henry did well in his studies. He liked learning all he could about faraway places, such as China and India. He wanted to enter into the trading business so he could visit the places he was learning about. His good company kept the sad side of my work away. I was not the happiest man in the world, but at least I had a good friend by my side. In the end, Henry was happy enough for both of us. He met many new people and made lots of new friends. Often he would spend time out of our rooms visiting this person or that person. He always asked me to go with him, but I never did. The monster's request hung over me like a dark cloud. I met regularly with the professor and learned a fair deal from his research. He gave me a lot of information about the female body and how it differed scientifically from the male. He was a kind and wise teacher. He taught me, he taught me everything I needed to know to build the monster's wife. But still, it upset me to no end to know that everything I learned was for such a horrible project. All of my time was devoted to gathering the tools I would need to work on the second creature. I had to make the monster's wife. The thought of making another creature made me sick. But I had promised, and I could not go back on my word. I built a small laboratory. I had to be careful never to let Henry or anyone else see what I was doing. Just as I was about to start my work, Henry got a letter from Scotland. A good friend of his asked both of us to come for a visit. I didn't want to go because it would mean putting off the work once again, but Henry insisted. I packed up my laboratory, careful to hide the proof of my latest project. I had so many trunks that we needed to hire a second carriage. Henry didn't mind. He was even more excited to see Scotland than he had been to visit England. We traveled through lovely countries and sweet little towns. Almost a year had passed since the day I met the monster on the glacier of Montenvers, and I was no further ahead, but I had not seen or heard from the monster, so I tried to forget about him. I wanted to enjoy our trip. A few weeks later, we arrived in the Highlands. After spending a month with his friend's family, Henry wanted to see more of Scotland. I knew I had to start my work. If I didn't do it now, I would never be brave enough to make the second creature. Henry noticed that my mood had been a little bit better since leaving London. He didn't want to go on alone and asked me to join him.
I said that I would be okay for a while. <laughs> I said that I would be okay for a while by myself. He finally agreed and decided to leave the next morning. I told him I would be fine. I would go to the Orkney Islands while he saw more of Scotland. The islands were perfect for my work. There were almost no people there. I knew I would not be bothered while I finished my work. I didn't want anyone to see what I was doing. More importantly, I didn't want anyone to see the monster if he came looking for me. Next morning, we both got ready to leave. Henry was still worried about me spending so much time by myself in such a lonely place. Henry, please don't worry. I'll be fine by myself, I said. You need to go and have more fun. And I think, and I need to finish my project before I can go home to Elizabeth. Victor, he said to me, I don't like it. But I'll go in by myself if you promise to meet me in Edinburgh in one month. More promises. I didn't know if I'd be finished in a month. But now, at least, I had a reason to. Yes, I said. It's a very good idea, Henry. I'll see you in exactly one month. With that, we shook hands. Henry smiled and waved as we drove away in his carriage. It took me much longer to get everything packed up. Finally, I was ready to leave, too. I was on my way to the Orkneys. I rented a very run-down cottage in a tiny village near Kirkwall. It had three rooms. One of these worked well with the laboratory. Although I had everything I needed to start, I had to force my hands to do the work. It was that awful. A dark cloud fell over my mind during this time. I knew something bad was going to happen. I just didn't know what or when.